quick follow-up. So you're not retracting the comment in question? It was a tweet uh, talking about how we stand with the 2SLGBTQI plus community, and we always will. We will always stand against hatred and intolerance wherever and from whoever it comes. But anyone who's trying to politicize or spin this as an attack on one particular group um, is trying to divide communities against each other. We are a government and a party that will always stand against intolerance wherever it is. saying anything um, that doesn't immediately affirm the idea of gender identity, you're called a transphobic bigot. Um, so mm. I think the conservatives are still really just scared of the media party and the way that they'll be spun by the government, you know, the liberal government lapdogs, how they'll be perceived in the mainstream media. And I think conservatives just need to get over them, get over it, get over themselves, have a spine, get a moral compass, listen to the valid concerns of parents who are whose children are really at the forefront of this. I hate to I hate to call it a battle, but um, at the forefront of this this indoctrination scheme that is unprecedented, that isn't based on any. Again, I spoke about uh, rational logical, reasonable things, tangible things. This is all based on hysteria and theory and ideologies. And so just leave the kids alone. If you want to leave this, you know, the idea of gender identity and sexual orientation and what have you to um, academics, to people in universities or scholars to put out papers or debate it or have these discussions, fine, go ahead, have at it. But leave the impressionable kids in a publicly funded school system alone protect their innocence first and foremost and then leave these um weighted heavily weighted conversations leave it to adults let the adults handle it leave the kids alone and you know we have um justin trudeau on the other side we have a breaking clip here in a press conference where he's asked if he'll apologize or, or condemn the characterization of muslim parents as hateful transphobic babies for simply bringing up the fact that they don't want their kids exposed to this SOGI 123 curriculum. Let's have a look at this. The Muslim Association of Canada and other groups have uh, recently condemned your characterization of people, including Muslim families, who recently protested for what they call parental rights. You use the word hate to describe their concerns, and you've been asked to retract that comment and apologize. Will you do that, and should you have been more careful in the way you discuss this issue? I will always stand up for everyone's rights in this country. Stand up for uh, Muslim communities, stand up for 2SLGBTQI plus communities, stand up for marginalized people across this country and protect them from intolerance and yes, from hatred when it is there. I am going to continue uh, to work to bring people together and to make sure our kids are protected while standing up for everyone's rights. This is something that is core to Canada, that we defend each other's rights, that we support each other. And I've never suggested that someone who's concerned about parental rights is somehow filled with hate or intolerance. <laughs> but what we need to make sure is that when we do see expressions of hatred or intolerance against Muslims, against the 2SLGBTQI plus community, against any Canadians, that we are firm in standing against intolerance, and that we reach out to bring people together. That's what I will always do. That's what this government has always done with Muslim Canadians and with all uh, members of diverse communities. Quick follow up, so you're not retracting the comment in question. It was a tweet uh, talking about how we stand with the 2SLGBTQI plus community, and we always will. We will always stand against hatred and intolerance wherever and from whoever it comes. But anyone who's trying to politicize or spin this as an attack on one particular group um, is trying to divide communities against each other. We are a government and a party that will always stand against intolerance wherever it is. Unless you're a Canadian trucker who was opposed to the government's COVID response and federally mandated injection legislation, 
then we can't tolerate those people. Remember, like that he he quite literally said, this is a small fringe minority with unacceptable views. And then he mm-hmm. went on the French broadcaster um, and he called them, you know, often racists, um, misogynist, misogynist, and and point blank said, do we tolerate these people? And now he's all about like tolerance and bringing people together. Uh, Meanwhile, he campaigned in 2021 on the wedge issue of your COVID-19 vaccine status, creating that medical apartheid divide between Canadians and families, right? Like my, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, my family has still not recovered from the divide that has been propagated onto Canadians by this very same government and his mainstream media lapdogs. And the rhetoric that he espouses constantly about this you know now that he's actually getting a little bit of pushback on it and arguably it was weak at best but um he he walks it back he can't attest to those strong firm stances he tweets about i don't know if we can pull up the tweet i think it was the one um yesterday or the day before where he said you know we'll always stand by and he forgot one of the cues now now there's two cues so it's two sl LGBTQQIA plus, I think. And it's sad that I even know that, but it's <laughs> as part of my job, you know, I have to know what is going on with in the socio political landscape of our country. Yeah, this is just yesterday. So this is what he's being questioned about here. And he oh, he got the acronym right there, the alphabet soup. Um, correct there. See the two Qs. So it's queer. Sheila told me, I think it was on Monday when we co hosted together. Um, it's queer and questioning um, is the reason for the two cues. He says indigenous women, girls, and two SLGBTQQIA plus people are, my screen's cut off a little bit there, but um, are valued and deserve better as we mark Sisters in Spirit Day. Didn't even know that was a thing. We remember those who have been murdered or are missing and we stand with their families and their communities. Um, it's so funny because he's been like asking about the tweet and it's probably not him that wrote the tweet so probably he arrived and it just like have like a interrogation point in his face it's just like what they're all talking about <laughs> he's all talk no action I think there's still a, a whole bunch of indigenous communities that don't even have basic access to clean running water I mean really and you're going to talk about um, the indigenous sisters and, and by the way he claimed that it will stand against hatred message or hatred um, action and violence, wherever it is. And so when all those churches were, were burning in Canada, he never claimed that as a hate crime. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm sorry, you don't stand for everybody. You stand for what you want to stand for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever the polls are showing. Hey, I got to tell you, I'm going on a cruise with a whole bunch of rebels. We're sailing out of Fort Lauderdale on March 23rd, 2024. That's not so far away, less than six months away. A gorgeous trip around the Caribbean, Holland America Line. Boy, is that luxurious. And we're going to bring some of our favorite rebel talent, Sheila Gunn Reed, David Menzies. And can you believe it? We're actually bringing Tamara Leach with us, and you are invited. That's rebelnewscruise.com. 